And welcome to this edition of the Native News Update on this Tuesday, September 20th. I'm your host for today's program, Paul Domain. Many of the stories right here can also be found at our websites at IndianCountryNews.com or IndianCountryTV.com. And here are some of the news stories for the day. An advisory council has recommended establishing a limited moose hunting season in the western Upper Peninsula. The Department of Natural Resources says that no final decision to move forward with a moose hunt would be made until after consultation with state tribal representatives. A final proposal would be presented for public comment. The Moose Hunting Advisory Council presented a report recommending the limited hunt to the Natural Resources Commission this week. The council recommends a hunt with no more than 10 bull moose license initially. License would be awarded by a lottery system. The hunt would take place in parts of Marquette, Barraga, and Iron Counties. The Sault Ste. Marie tribe of Chippewa have said it opposes a moose hunt at this time. A federal judge in Washington, D.C. could influence the Cherokee Nation's embattled election for chief when he delves into the inner workings of one of the uh, country's largest tribes. U.S. District Judge Henry H. Kennedy heard arguments today about whether votes for and from descendants of slaves once owned by the Cherokee Nation, known as the Freedmen, should count during this upcoming Saturday's election. Recounts from a flawed election in June reversed the results four times between the longtime chief and his challenger. Tribal experts believe the freedmen could vote in the new leadership. The election challenges were playing out in tribal courts until the freedmen sued, citing an 1866 treaty they say guarantees their tribal rights and their rights to vote. The federal government has warned that the election would not be legal if freedmen weren't allowed to vote. A new $68 million health care center that will serve Native Alaskans from a 185,000 square mile portion of the interior of Alaska is taking shape in South Fairbanks. The Chief Andrew Isaac Health Care Center will quadruple the size of the current clinic on the upper floors of Fairbanks Memorial Hospital. Mike Davis, the project manager for GHEMM, the primary contractor, told the Fairbanks Daily News Miner that the building will be enclosed by October when work will shift to the building's interior. The clinic treated about 14,000 patients last year. At times, doctors and nurses uh, had to treat patients in the hallways. Tanana Chiefs uh, President Jerry Isaac said other patients were taken to Anchorage for care that was not available. Former Ute Mountain Ute Tribal Chairman Ernest House Sr. has passed away in an accident while riding his mo motorcycle. He was 65 years old. The accident occurred September 17th in McElmo Canyon when his motorcycle collided with a car. House was raised in Mancus Canyon and elected to the Ute Mountain Ute Tribal Council in 1979. He was elected chairman in 1982 and served off and on for several terms until the year 2010. According to the Cortez Journal, House has also worked for the Bureau of Indian Affairs, National Park Service, as well as president and CEO of several tribal businesses and enterprises. A Duluth, Minnesota opera celebrating American Indian culture is being criticized for its failure to cast Native Americans in principal roles. The Duluth Festival Opera's production of Pocahontas, A Woman of Two Worlds, opens this week. Native American opera soprano Liz Jacola, a member of the Fond du Lac Chippewa Band, said there's no excuse for not casting American Indians. Duluth Festival Opera director Craig Fields tells the News Tribune the auditions didn't generate interest from American Indian opera performers. Jack Cola says the casting crew didn't try hard enough or do it in the right way to attract Native Americans. Fields says there are parts of the opera that call for only American Indian involvement and that the Fond du Lac singers and drummers are involved with the production. British oil giant BP will pay the U.S government $20.5 million to resolve claims that its subsidiaries underpaid royalties owed to the federal government and Native Americans. The 
Justice Department has announced. The settlement arises from a whistleblower lawsuit filed by Harold Wright, who is chairman of the National Gas Supply Association, according to the Justice Department spokesman Charles Miller. About $270 million has been collected from energy companies, including ExxonMobil Corporation, Royal Dutch Shell, Chevron Corporation, Anadarko Petroleum Corporation, and Marathon Oil Corporation because of the lawsuit. Miller said there is at least one case still pending. The lawsuit claimed that the companies improperly deducted certain costs from the royalty values, reported processed gas as unprocessed gas to reduce payments, and didn't follow correct accounting procedures on certain leases, according to the Justice Department. The BP divisions that must pay the settlement reached last Friday are Amoco Corporation, Amoco Production Company, BP Exploration and Oil Inc., BP America, and Atlantic Richfield Company and Bastar. And I feel for them because we know oil companies, they just aren't making hardly any profits at all on their products. And that is another roundup of news from Indian Country on this edition of the Native News Update. We want to thank you for joining with us and you come back again soon.